Hello everyone and welcome back to AK Academy and another tutorial in uh, Reactive UI and Xamarin Forms. In this session we are going to build our first observable in Reactive UI using the when any value function that's provided by Reactive Object. We are going to build something like this. Like here is a list view, contains a set of contacts and here we have an entry. Uh, we are going to create an observable to uh, called search query, it's a simply string property, but we are going to convert it into observable using when any value function. So instead of using the text changed event uh, here and using behaviors so we can use comments with it in view models, we can simply uh, listen to the changes of the string property, which is a very powerful behavior. And whenever any changes happen to that property, we can respond immediately. In this example, we can filter the list after a second. So we make sure that the user finished typing. So we can respond to that change in this property and filter the list. Okay, so let's get started with that. First thing I'm going to do is to create a new folder called models and create the contacts class inside it. Here, like add on new class, call it contact. And let's add some few properties. Public string, full name, get, uh, sorry, set string phone and public string email okay now we can go and build our view models or our view model that it's called contacts view model contacts view model nice marked as public and inherits from reactive object the magical class okay first uh, before I do anything I'm going to create a sample static list of contacts for now in other videos we are going to see how we can collect this from other resources or get them from services using dependency injection but for now I'm going to create a static list of contacts contact samples sorry here full name equals to Ahmed Muzaffar email here is my email address phone is just any phone number create another one full name equals Sammy contact email equals to Sammy at test.com phone equals Okay, nice phone number. Okay. Now, I'm going to create the properties. The first property is the query property. It's going to be pined to the search entry. Search query let's give it a default value and here string search query get set this dot tries and set if changed value search query value okay the other property is the collection As you can see here, I'm not using a normal uh, list 
like this. I'm using observable collection of type contact instead of list or array. Uh, why? Uh, for now, observable collection is a built-in in .NET library, but it's a list, but it implements the iNotify collection change, which notifies the UI whenever any change happened inside this collection. For example, a new item has been added, removed, changed, whatever, modified. So this immediately reflects the changes to the UI. But this normal list can't do this. We can add values to this, remove, but if we bind a list view in the UI to this list, uh, the changes here cannot be reflected to the UI. So if we add a new item to it, we can't see it in the UI till we like open the page again or make something. But this implements the notification mechanism, so it immediately reflects what we want. There are other sort of collections that Reactive UI provides us with, and they are so powerful and amazing, but we are going to talk about this in a specific session later on. Okay, now let's continue contact contacts set this dot tries and set if changed if contacts and value okay now the last thing we want to do is to initialize this class I'm going to create a constructor Inside this constructor, I'm going to give this a default value, which is it contains the whole samples. Now is to create our observable. How we can do this? We can use this dot when any value. We can pass an lambda expression. It takes a parameter of uh, an instance of this of the current class vm.search query and this way when any value returns as you can see observable i observable of type string which now i can subscribe to this observable and uh, get notified whenever it changed and do whatever i want so i'm going to use a function called subscribe dot subscribe and here another lambda expression but it takes an string parameter which is the search query and here I can do whatever I want immediately when this changed uh, what I want to do is to filter this list depends on the query that the user enters in the entry and <coughs> uh, here I'm going to create a new instance of contacts each time the user types anything inside the entry. So first let's filter the contacts using link samples dot where okay contact dot full name. to lawyer okay uh, the query that the user enters or c dot phone that contains query or the email c dot email dot contains query and let's return a list of that now contacts equals to new observable collection and we can add the filter with contacts to it here we go everything's ready let me explain this again when any value create an observable uh, for uh, the property we pass here and here returns an observable of type string so i can listen to this the same way we listen to the text changed event or the click event for the button in the UI and we can respond to that inside the subscribe function <coughs> uh, like it is exactly the same for the event handler for a click or text changed or whatever other events in the UI but here you are subscribed to as a normal .NET type like string or integer or whatever you don't need you are not really 
linking this to a specific UI element in a specific uh, platform in Xamarin, WPF or whatever. Here you are dealing with a normal type, which is a very powerful point in reactive UI. In addition to this, you can see the code is very neat and gentle, clean and clear. And you can be more productive, especially when you are building very big projects. So now we can create our page and bind to those properties. Okay. I'm going to call it contacts page. Okay. Here inside the stack layout. I'm going to put an entry and give it a margin, three placeholder search and text binding to search query property. Here, let's create a list of view, has an even rows equals to true, do not limit the height of the row, and item source binding to contacts property in the view model and that's enough we need just a little margin to here last view dot item template set each item or the template of each item inside the list data template view cell okay I'm going to use a frame corner radius 5 margin 2 padding th four or three okay and here i'm going to add a label horizontal option center text binding to full name font size large and text color equals to black create three instances of them Ah, uh, uh, sorry, I have to put them inside the stack layout. And instead of set a margin for each label, I can just simply set a spacing, the spacing property of the stack layout, and that's enough. Here, I'm going to be point to the phone. And the last one for the email. Let's make this medium, small, dark gray and gray okay the last step is to set the binding context property of the content page to an instance of contact view model i'm going to set it using this or this time just to save some time i'm going to bind it inside the code behind file. Let's see. Binding context equals new contacts view model. Now, here we go, everything's ready. I'm going to set the main page to the contacts page and run the project. Page. Okay, cool. And let's run that. Okay, very cool. Here is all the contacts inside this list of view. And let's try to type something inside uh, this entry. Like, Ahmad contact 342. Wow, that's so nice. You can see it's something amazing. But let's try to add some something else like, uh, imagine you are bringing this list from the internet. Of course, when the user types like Ahmed, 
You don't need to make five requests while he's writing Ahmed. But, so we can wait to the user a little bit, like after he finishes writing in half a second or a second, we can make the request. So then we make sure like he finished. We can use a nice function here. When any value, we can use a function called throttle. To delay the execution of this function here for a specific time that we can define let's say time span dot from seconds one second now when the user finish finishes typing after one second we run this function and filter the list so then we can make sure like he finished Okay, again, I'm going to write something. Aha, uh -huh. that's nice. You can see after I finished in one second, it returns the result, which is more convenient actually, especially if you get the data from a remote source, not from <laughs> in this example, which is a static list. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. Actually, the current code is going to be available on GitHub. You can find the link in the description box. If you have any questions, simply just drop your question inside the comments. In the comment section, I will try to respond as soon as I can. Uh, in the next video, we are going to talk about uh, a specific type in Reactive UI called uh, Observable as Property Helper, which is another powerful thing in Reactive UI. Uh, Hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button if you really enjoyed that. Thank you so much.